in Libya, there were some terrorist attacks sponsored by Libya in the latter part of 85. And then so suddenly in January of 86, um, we're flying and we're doing this uh, freedom of navigation. And then the line of death, Gaddafi had had this, you can't cross this line of death. Well, you know, and so we're going down in and, and, and flying. And um, so in January and February and March of 1986, we're, we're doing these ops, freedom of navigation ops off of Libya. And the Libyans were sending out, and they had MiG 25s and MiG 23s. Um, MiG 25 has got huge cans. I mean, it's it's a big, big airplane. The first intercept that I made on, was on a, a MiG 23. And, you know, these guys had a nominal forward quarter capability. So we had to honor that. We weren't just going to let them uh, pop us in the face. So pre notch or pre the tactics of notching and doing. We were doing the same things in A7s, actually, back when I was, you know, at 20 miles, the pulse Doppler on the Tomcat radar, go into the beam, put out a bunch of chaff, descend, you know, we, we were, the, I considered them warning area tactics at the time because you could make the Tomcat guys lose, lose you by doing this. But we're doing similar kinds of things on the fly, going, okay, we got to defeat their forward quarter capability. So very dynamic, low to high. Uh, stern conversions uh, kind of intercepts. So this MiG-23 is flying along and he's just, he's got his wings out f forward and he's flying along. And so I came up, came up a little closer. My wingman's back aft just to make sure that if there's anything. And finally, I get into, I get into parade with him. I can't shoot this son of a bitch. Let's see if we can have a little fun with him. Man. Greetings. <laughs> Watch the birdie. And this guy, out of his periphery, see, he jumps. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't aware of the fact that I was there. You know, and it was like, uh, these guys are not that good. Um, I, I was going to ask, I was like, if they were showing any awareness, but that question right there, that, that uh, statement answers that question. Yeah. The um, anyway, so January and February, we do a bunch of intercepts on Libyan airplanes. Things are heating up, and so the next time in March, uh, they didn't send they didn't send the air they didn't send their fighters out. They'd send a um, a candid kind of a C one forty one looking big airplane to come out and take a look at the you know where we were what we were doing. Um, but then there was one day. This was in March. You know, I've been to, I lived in Florida for many years out of Cecil Field. And so I've seen shuttle launches and satellite launches and things like that. It was not an uncommon thing. And things are heating up and flying along. And I see this it looks like a satellite launch out of, out of Cape Canaveral. I'm coming back to the ship. Oh, oh what other satellite? Well, it's an SA-5. Coming back to the ship. Oh, what other satellite? Well, it was an SA-5. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was low and far away. It, I, there was right. no threat to me, but it was like, holy shit, that's an SA-5. I mean, I got back to the ship, and I that was when I realized uh, real. what that was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, anyway, that was a good cruise. It was really fun. Just knife in our teeth. Our skipper, a guy named uh, John Nathman, calls on Black. He had been a J.O. in Phantoms. He had had his department head tour in Tomcats, and now he's the skipper of a Hornet squadron. So he, he was a Top Gun bro. Uh, he was in the 4477th. Uh, so he had, he had incredible experience. He had had, you know, he, he closed the door. I guess we can talk about this now, right? There's books. There are books about it. Yeah. Anyway, so Black goes, hey, I've flown these jets. And they're shit. <laughs> you can't stay out of them. <laughs> and so Black's guidance was if you're ever yeah, our tactics are conservative by design. You know, you come to a merge, you take your shot, you blow through. Don't don't drop if you drop anchor, you're against a professional adversary, you're gonna get nailed by somebody if you turn at the merge. Take your shot, blow through. Black goes, All right, if you have if you're directed to shoot down these guys. He said, 
Don't let any of them go back. Everything you've learned, these guys are not good. Don't give them a learning curve. Zero. Yeah. Shoot them all down and do whatever it takes to do that. So the fangs in our, <laughs> our math, <laughs> the, fang- the fangs are out. <laughs> fangs are through the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, I've obviously never flown one, but going to like the uh, the petting zoo out of Nellis, you know, which you can – go walk through sitting in the, the, some of the cockpits, like the ergonomics of it. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine just visibility alone that. Yeah. I mean, thick screens and yeah, yeah. Very user unfriendly. Um, yeah. It'd be a, it'd be a challenge, but it still can reach out and bite you. Yeah, absolutely. So paying it respect. That's, that's an interesting time. I mentioned on another podcast cause I'm right by Dobbins here. I think they're still there. The Libyan C one thirties that Gaddafi had purchased. Huh? right before the embargo and then which is surprising because now this has happened maybe we've the contracts have been re- rewritten or the federal codes changed because same with turkey i saw turkey's first two f-35s on the line which obviously those those didn't get scrapped they've been repurposed right uh but these c-130s are sitting out there with trees growing through them wow uh, because the libyans had, had purchased them Etc. So it's it's interesting to see the dynamics. But you spent obviously a lot of your career over there 